On rare occasions, we'll get a request about something that I don't know how to do. Well, this time we got a request about something I do know how to do, but I never do in my own paintings. And that is, how do you create a rainbow? Well, I was shown that, and I know, I think, how I can show you how it will work. So we'll give it a try. Now there may be other ways to put rainbows in your paintings, but this is one way that we know will work for sure. And once you get the hang of how this works, then you can try other methods too. For example, if you're an a la prima painter, you might have a little bit of a problem getting the principle to work for you. And that's because the painting needs to be dry. So let's go into why or what observations we make of the rainbow that makes it so difficult to do. It is one of the most difficult images to put in a painting and keep it from looking false or overstated or too sweet. You know, something we, most of us really can't stand. So let's just look at what, what is actually going on. I got a photo here. This rainbow, obviously, uh, the, the, the photographer is very, very close to the rainbow. We don't usually see rainbows this big because we're, they are used, uh, usually in the distance from us. So we see the colors more, um, shall we say, jammed up close together. Uh, rainbow is a lot more narrow. But the reason I want to choose this one is because it shows us what we need to know, how we need to observe a, a rainbow, and it also shows us how to do it, pretty much. So look, first of all, what are we seeing? We're seeing a sequence of color, hues, hues. A sequence of hues. Now in this rainbow, those hues go from violet for, and then they change to red violet and then they change to red and then they change to orange, then to yellow, then to then they go through yellow green right in here and they change then to a green and then they change to a blue green. Notice it begins here with violet. Notice here, this rainbow begins with violet. A lot of the recommendations about analyzing rainbows will show the violet on this side. So in my observation of rainbows, I, I usually see them like this. I'll see a very light tint of violet moving into red, moving in, and so on. So you observe what is that sequence, or where does the sequence start? With which hue does the sequence start? in your observation. So there's step one and one. Now, it's transparent. Rainbows are transparent because they are refracted light or refracted water in light. And so they're transparent. If you'll notice, we can see right through them, right in here. So that tells us in order for it to be transparent, we must use a glaze of the color we're using uh, or else it's going to look fake. So there's another observation. What's another observation? There are no edges here. There are no hard edges here. All the edges are soft. All the edges are blended. One color is moving it gradually into another, gradually into another. So you see a continuous gradation of hue. So that tells us something else we'll need to do. We'll need to do a lot of blending. Uh, and so those things, the, the blending and the, uh, and the glaze, mean that we probably should use a softer brush. So you see how you can observe images, you can observe the characteristics of image, images, and that information you get from the observation will tell you what you need to do. So there's one more thing, and that is if you squint, you'll see this area where the rainbow is, is located, is actually lighter in value than the areas around it. So if it's lighter in value, and that tells us also that the colors we use need to be lighter in value. So th that's the observation. Now take the color wheel down here, and actually take down this photo, and let's move to how do we apply what we just observed. Now one thing I would recommend, in your, if you're going to teach yourself through this 
sequence of instruction, teach yourself how to put a rainbow into a painting. Um, it would be probably a good idea if you go through some pre preparation first. And what one thing I would suggest is to set up your palette with a sequence of colors, hues, at their highest saturation, their highest intensity, their highest chroma. Saturation, intensity, and chroma, all the same thing. Um, no low saturated color is going to work on this. So you can't use yellow ochre, for example, or burnt sienna, for example. Those colors won't work because we don't see those in the rainbow. We see these colors at their highest saturation, highest plus lighter. So if you set up a sequence of hues on your palette uh, of the primary and secondary colors, uh, starting in, in this case, starting with violet, and keep them all close to the same value range. So you'll notice I have added white. This is the dioxin purple in oil. In other, uh, it may be other colors, but it is a violet that's close to the violet on the color wheel. Add white to it and raise its value. That's this. This is the cadmium red. Uh, they may be called other things, but that alizarin uh, crimson is probably not the best choice for this. The one of the really, really highly saturated cadmiums or napfuls uh, will probably be your best choice for this. And this is cadmium orange. Same thing for the orange. This, uh, I'm using Hansa Yellow Light here. It's a little more transparent. You could use Cadmium Yellow Light. This is a green. Uh, there are greens uh, in tube colors that are spectrum greens. That would work as long as the value is raised, adding white to it. Uh, I've created this green with the Rembrandt Viridian in Hansa Yellow Light and white. And this is the blue. Now, the blue, cobalt blue, is the ideal blue for using and creating a rainbow. In most cases, that's going the value of that's going to have to be raised. Uh, I didn't have cobalt blue, believe it or not, because I rarely use it in oil painting. And so I used a mixture of the ultramarine blue and phthalo blue with white. And that's how I came up with this color. So that's the first step. Mix your colors and get them organized in such a way that you don't have to worry about that part while you're doing the rainbow. Okay, the second part, glazing. This needs to be done through the prints, through the technique of glazing. You don't just imagine and pray for it and it appears there. There's technique to everything you do. So, for that, uh, any glazing, any really good, this is oil painting, any good glazing material will work. Acrylic, any good glaze, glazing material will work. Gouache, you're going to have a little problem there. You're going to need to use transparent watercolor. Watercolor is simply a thinner, uh, more water added to the color itself. Now, watercolor is a little bit trickier. With watercolor, instead of the first step I'm going to do, you're going to dampen, very slightly dampen the paper. So I'm trying to cover all this because when I'm using oils to show a demonstration, I often get questions about can you do that with this, this, and that. So, okay, that's probably enough talk. Somebody's going to complain about that. Um, so where do we put the rainbow and how do we start? And then how are we going to get that even arc? If you're used to gesture drawing and you're used to your drawing coming from your shoulder and elbow, you should be able to do that freehand just by the, uh, a continuous movement. You can't do that with a slow movement. It will, it will look jerky. But if you make an arch, arc, whatever, with, with your, just the movement of your hand like this, you can do that. If you're not confident with that, there's a little trick you can use. And that is a piece of string tied in a slip knot like that, and then connected to your brush like this, and then mark a place on your, uh, somewhere, a place that you can reach. So let me mark. All right, so let's say we're going to put the arc right in, sort of right in there. Then what I would need to do is to find the, the length I need and the length I need and the location here. So you see if, I'm, if I have a very short length, it's going to make a very tiny arch, arc. 
arc, I think is the right word. If I have a longer length, it's going to make a longer arch or a larger arch. So where is it going to start? So let's say I'm going to have it to start, if I were going to have it to start right here, and then I could do that. Okay, so that's going to go about right over there. Let's uh, pull it down just a little bit. All right, let's see that. That that's see. So it needs to be pulled down a little bit more if it starts right here. And I want it to sh a good bit of it to show. This might work right here just like that. So I would put my mark right here, and you need to do that because you're going to have to start at the, every, at the same point for every color in the rainbow. So that's that's a little crutch you can use. And you can use that for any time you need a um, circle or a, well, mainly a circle that is, uh, you want it to be straight. You don't want it to be jerky. You want it to look like it's controlled. So we painters can use all kinds of little tricks like that uh, to get the job done. It's okay to do. So uh, I'm going to attempt to, to do this freehand because when I use crutches, except for the uh, mall stick, it slows me down. Okay, next step for oil painters, acrylic painters. Next step, we need, wherever we're going to place that rainbow, we need an under, uh, under glaze of white. Uh, now that's to make it work. So, that means you need a glazing medium. Now I have a glazing medium here. It doesn't matter what kind, as long as it's a good glazing medium. You need to have paper towel in your hand. I keep saying you need, you need, so forgive me for that. Uh, paper towel in your hand. Not much medium in the brush. And I'm just going to develop a glaze right over here. Just pull it down just enough. It won't take much. Just enough, enough of that to give me that the glaze. About like that. Very, very thin glaze of white. Now, what I can do now is I need to... Here I go again. I can gauge where the rainbow needs to be located. So suppose it need, suppose I want it about right here. If I want right there, see what I'm doing here? I'm using my finger to create that arch to find it. Suppose I want it right in there. All right, so that's where I will make my line and the rainbow will probably go down about right there. They usually disappear at the bottom. Now, that needs to be blended. So the tendency, this is a soft brush, this is a soft filbert, uh, what is the number of it? Mm, eight. It's off filbert eight. Uh, the tendency when we're using a brush like that is that we'll have a hard edge on the side where the point of the brush hit the canvas. We'll have a soft edge on the belly side. So what we'll need to do is to soften that edge just by pulling the belly over the edge. Watch that edge disappear as I soften it. There we go, just like that. Now we could have a little bit of edge showing, but now you see I have a bare hint of that glaze. Next step, we begin with the color. Now here, I'm going to ask you to be patient, realizing this is not something I, um, I guess maybe you might call this an apology. This is not something I do in my own paintings. I don't think I have ever put a rainbow in my own paintings because to me uh, it's got to have a purpose and so far I haven't found a purpose for a rainbow to go in. So, uh, so if you're just doing this to be cutesy or sweet or whatever, don't do it. If it has a purpose in your painting, do it. That's just that. Um, okay, it looks like that glaze is beginning to kind of go away a little bit. I think I better do that Again, that's something for you to watch for. So here we go again. We'll put a little bit more of that white down. Get that a little bit uh, more defined. You see, every time I put, every time I'm doing that, I'm bracing, I'm bracing with my finger. With, I'm using my middle finger <laughs> to, to brace that. It doesn't matter which one you use. It's the one you feel most comfortable with. All right, so now I'm going to go into the colors of the rainbow. So I'll pull that white glaze out and take another, just barely put glaze, uh, the glazing medium into my brush, ease it into the purple. Now if it's too wet, it's going to make a hard edge. So you don't want it too wet. And I'm trying to give you all the instruction here. Okay, now we get that uh, relatively transparent 
And the way you can tell it's see, I'm gradually pulling the color into the glazed medium so I can see just how transparent that is. Check it right here. That may not be transparent enough. So let's go back and let's pick up just a little bit more of the glazing medium. I'm going to test it there. That that <laughs> that may be transparent enough. Okay, so what we're going to do here, now I'm going to brace, I'm going to brace my brush. Brace my brush and I'm going to gently place that color in. I'm going to need just a little bit more. A little bit more there. Okay, you can begin to see that color. I'm going to brace my hand again. There we go. There we go. You can begin to see that color come in. And that's all we need to see. Okay, see that purple coming in there? It does disappear. Uh, you see, see, you can, you should be able to see through it the images behind it. I'm going to make a very subtle rainbow here. I'm not going to make one that's highly emphasized. So, if you want, if the rainbow is really strong, highly emphasized, more pigment, less glaze. If it's a very subtle rainbow, more glaze, less pigment. And so, with practice, you can learn that. Now, I move on to the next color which is the cadmium red light and just let's do the same thing. Another thing to consider when you're doing this sort of thing is the tinting strength of the color. Some colors are stronger than others so they won't require, they, won't, they will require less paint and more glaze. So let's just uh, test this right here. That is a little strong. And so you, you're controlling lots of things when you're doing this, but it's a fun little exercise. There we go. That should do it. Uh, again, <clears throat> observation. Observing a rainbow while you're doing this is a good idea rather than trying to make the whole thing up. All right, so red comes next. And here we go. Again, I'm going to brace my, brace my hand and I'm going to hold that brush. I hold that brush uh, pretty much like I would hold it if I'm doing a um, scumble. With the belly of the brush, the angle, if you hold it this way, you're going to get it too sharp. So the brush needs to be held at about, oh, say about this angle right here, something like that. And you you uh, bet, just sort of whisper, sort of whisper that brush over, whoops, whisper, kind of whisper, which I mean is you're, you're gently caressing the canvas with that brush. You're not... You're not uh, throwing the paint on there in great amounts. But there we go. There we go. Right there. And you sort of blend it into the white, that, the uh, purple that was above it. Let's get that down right here. I'm going to let that taper off right here into the ground. Okay. All right. Now, so, and we're going to continue that sequence. And I'll continue the sequence throughout. Next color is orange. Once again, we'll load not too much of that glaze into the orange. And, and when you're doing this, ease the, uh, the brush that has the glaze and ease it into the edge. If you'll notice, I've neglected to say that I took my palette knife and pulled these, these colors down flat before I started the, uh, the quick tip. So uh, that helps an awful lot. It helps you control the amount of color that actually goes into that brush. So there we go. Now let's see if we can get that orange going. And it, once again, brace my, brace my hand, uh, brace this hand with the other one. And here we go. Here we go. Okay, just a little bit less, a little bit less. Little, there we go, right there. All right, see we're getting a pretty good rainbow set up there. Then we're going to go orange comes next is yellow. Same thing. So we're just doing a, re a repetition now, repetition all the way through. So glaze on the brush, not much into the yellow, loaded just from the edges. Now this is, I said before, this is hands to yellow light. If you're using cadmium yellow light, you might not take quite as much. So you 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 be the judge of that. Okay. Got a little bit ahead of myself there. All right, now the yellow, if you'll notice in the rainbow, the yellow 
sort of stands out because it is the lightest in value of all the colors we have. And it's also the warmest. I know there's a controversy about that, but uh, we will talk about that right now. Now you see how that begins to sort of blend in. Uh, that edge is a little sharp. So I want to get that edge a little bit less sharp. I'll just give it a little whisper with a brush. Uh, I wipe the brush off if you notice. I'm giving it just a little whisper with a brush where I see the edge go on sharp. I see that one's a little sharp right there too. Alright, see so we almost got ourselves a rainbow here. And then, <clears throat> and by the way, I've got the original photo I showed you. I've got this rainbow right here right underneath here and I've got an eye on it while I'm doing this demonstration. So that might help you to know a little bit of knowledge. So next color is the green and that will just ease the edge of the brush with the glaze in it and if, if you keep a paper towel handy it'll help you control the amount because the amount of color you put in that brush is going to Make all the difference in the world. All right, so here we go again. Brace the hand and find your own way of bracing after a while. Okay, barely touch. Barely touch the canvas with that green. You see it going on there? There we go. And then the blue. Repetition again, same thing. So you can see that, just like in all painting, this is about technique. It's not about having talent to know how to do something. It's about knowing how to do a technique. And so if you control the technique as you're going, uh, aware of your control on every step, um, there's no image in the world that you can't paint. All right. Now going with the blue, going in. <laughs> with the blue there. I've got that little, that blue is strong in tinting strength because so this particular blue has got that phthalo blue in it. So let's see here how we make that work. We can start it about right here. Aha. Okay. You see, with uh, the, the, you see my brush, it might move with uh, repeated strokes like this, but you see I'm controlling the direction of its movement by the brace I'm putting on my hand. So this is a good alternative using this method of your hand for a brace and then creating that arc uh, by, by propping your other hand on that hand and just rotating the brush like that. That's a good alternative or using the little uh, slip knot like I showed you earlier. So that pretty much all. That pretty much is how you create a rainbow in your painting. Be sure to view all of our quick tips. And while you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section, and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to DyingMinds.com, where I have full-length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter, and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.